What happens when you get a movie that has an excellent premise but doesn't follow through on that premise and really doesn't know what it wants to be? You get The Last Voyage of the Demeter. Last Voyage of the Demeter is a new film from Universal. It comes out uh, this Friday. And it's all about uh, Dracula making his way from Transylvania to London. It's a portion of the Dracula novel by Bram Stoker. It's a wonder that the authors got such a great kernel of a movie out of basically what amounts to a chapter of that book, The Captain's Log of Dracula of the Demeter. So you have a, a movie that from the marketing and all of that, it looks like it's a horror movie. It looks like it's alien except Dracula on a boat. That sounds amazing, doesn't it? It sounds amazing to me. That's why I wanted to go see it so badly. And I was so disappointed when they delayed it from January of this year to August now. It doesn't know if it wants to be a horror movie, a slasher movie. It doesn't know if it wants to be a 70s style hammer film or a historical piece or an action movie or something else entirely because it pulls itself in all of these different directions to where it doesn't do anything super well and super special. Now, that might sound like, oh, this is leaning towards it being a bad movie. It's not a terrible movie. The performances in the film, especially from the leads, uh, David Dusmalchian is fantastic in it. And it just, the, the actors work away really well, some of them do, with material that isn't as good. It doesn't, like some of the characters just act as, Ex exposition machines for to explain things and then other things don't get explained as well so they don't go through like oh we're going to explain all this stuff about dracula why is this girl in a crate why is she here why isn't she dead why isn't she a vampire why does she have this sort of mental link with dracula but then you don't explain some other things in the film it doesn't know what it wants to explain and what it doesn't want to do also the last voyage of the demeter it does the cardinal sin of a horror movie especially one about a monster it simply shows Dracula far too much. The early kills in the film, they're terrifying, they're scary. The, the, it goes through this range of tension building and it, go, and it makes you feel like, oh cool, we're gonna get a sick, scary ass Dracula movie. And this isn't Bela Lugosi Dracula, this is Nosferatu monster Dracula. Then it just keeps showing the monster. It's, it's, it's strange where you would like a movie like The Boogeyman where it spends the entire time not showing the monster until it needs to. A movie like Jaws where you don't see the shark at all. Alien, you don't see the alien at all in the film until it really matters. Here, you see Dracula. You see them so much and it's just like mind numbing that you wouldn't watch this and go, why are we showing the monster so much? It's not scary at a certain point. After the like fourth kill in the film, you're just kind of like, eh, it's a monster. It's pretty gross that they're like slashing people's throats and stuff. It's not scary. It doesn't end up being scary after a certain point because you're used to it. You're used to seeing it. The moments where it's supposed to be scary, it isn't because you're like, I've seen, I've seen this. It's just, it ends up feeling more like an action movie. Like I said before, with the ending of the film, the third act takes a long time to get there as well. This is a two hour movie. If it wanted to be a slasher alien monster movie, cut off some of that time limit, make it so that it's a faster pace. It all comes back to the point that this movie doesn't know what it wants to be, and it's disappointing. It's very disappointing because there's some good stuff here. The film is scary. The music by Bear McCreary is great. It's a simple score, but it aids the film oh so well. But it all just gets back to the point of this movie doesn't know what it wants to be. The writing on, on certain sections is just exposition after exposition. It's just explaining things. It's just not doing what you would want out of a movie. It's, it's, it's telling you and not showing you. The effects are great, though. For people that love gore, there's some great gore shots here as well. You get Dracula ripping people's throats out and doing all that cool stuff. So there it's really nice and it's so... It's two parallels where you go, wait, man, there was a, just a great movie in this idea. There was a great movie in here and it just needed that extra bit of working through to get through some of this stuff that bogs it down. The movie goes through long stretches where nothing is happening and it's not advancing the plot as much. The only thing that's advancing the plot is that the boat is going from one place to another and the characters are kind of just going along for the ride. And as the audience, that's the way that you feel with The Last Voyage of the Demeter. It needed a compass, and I don't want to be punny, but 
haha, we're punny. It needed a compass to know where it was going, to know how to get there. And it didn't. It just feels kind of aimless and just blasé. If I had to give it a score, The Last Voyage of the Demeter would get a 70 out of 100. There's some good stuff here, but it's, it's, it's just kind of harder to sit through. This is one I'll recommend if you when it comes out on streaming or on Blu-ray, maybe renting it, checking it out. You might like it more than I did, but as for now, The Last Voyage of the Demeter, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a uh, recommendation, but not a glowing one. It's a disappointing film at the end of the day, and it's really sad because I wanted more of this out of this movie. But if you like more stuff like this and you want to see more horror content, we've got Fright Athon 2023 coming up, folks. So make sure to check out all of Fright Athon 2022 to get ready for that.